Okay, one of the better valve spring tools that I found would be this tool right here, but for this large VR6 cylinder head, I may modify it so that way it can reach around and I can gain access to all the springs. But one of the main advantages of this is it does less damage with, or virtually any damage. Um, it compresses the springs very nicely. You don't have to worry about pounding with the hammer and uh, trying to unload this spring so that the keepers could pop out. But right here, this bottom part, you can center it perfectly in the middle of the valve so that the valve is stay seated properly. You don't have to worry about bending the valve by pounding on it and the valve actually popping out from this part of the head, hitting the table or whatever you have, the, the surface that you have the cylinder head laying on and possibly bending the valve. It keeps the valve perfectly flat in the seat while the top part, I can crank this in. And it's a little challenging holding the light so that you can see, but crank this in. And as you see, my keepers pop out once I spring it. And all I have to do is get a magnetic pickup tool, stick it in, and bingo, there's your keeper. Okay, getting to the inner valve springs is very challenging because as you can see, this is in the center of the cylinder head. So what I have is an old school valve spring compressor. Um, <laughs> I had to wrap some tape around one of the spring keeper tools. That way I can um, compress it. And I wrap some electrical tape around here just to keep the valve seated. It works, but I found a tool just like this that I just ordered and it already had provisions for this top cap right here, which are the interchangeable caps as well as the bottom part that'll, uh, with a pivot head, that'll seat flat up against the valves itself. So that tool should be coming in a few days, but that'll be a lot better as far as reinstallation. making some progress here. Phase one of the intake design that I'm having made up. Originally, I started off with this. Ordered this from the UK. This was the only plate set up for a 3.6 liter engine. The one over in the States, we were making up one. They had adapter plates and everything, but it was nowhere near to my satisfaction and it would have restricted the horsepower major. So back to this, phase one started off as a three quarter inch thick piece of aluminum just as this did also this was machined down there's the back plate design we got a recess for the runner tubes that we're going to get welded in phase two plate I had it machined out so the guy did an excellent job machining everything out we kept nice perimeters this inner I had the thickness taken down to 3 8 inch thick as the outer thickness is still 3 quarter so it's nice and beefy this actually gives a lot of meat also for welding up onto our intake runner tubes. All right, this part right here, this is our adapter plate that will be bolting up to the cylinder head. So this engine, we're gonna be running 12 injectors, the original six plus an additional six that goes right here into these ports. So this design is gonna be extremely nice. So for example, this is the 3.2 intake manifold. So I'll set up, bam. Back here in the background, this baby is looking sweet. So this design that I'm coming up with, we can use the Scup Works racing, the ultra racing intake manifold. We can add 
adapters in here just as I stated before in a previous video this is two liters just expansion right here as you see two liter all right so this is sweet nice volume on the inside right off the bat this is a little over five liters of volume so right off the bat if I'm not mistaken I think this was 3.2 Plus, my 2 liters of volume gives us 5.2 liters of volume, so that's plenty for our 1500 plus horsepower. This is the original setup for a 3.2 liter. As you can see, the big difference with intake throttle bodies. This is a lot smaller. So, and our port setup. So, if I pull up the back part of this, you can see right here we have. This is machined in for O-rings, which is very nice. So this to give better sealing for our higher boost levels. You can already tell the difference in the port setup. <laughs> so we're talking about a 3.2, which the port size is nice. And that's a nice floor cylinder head, um, the R32. As you can see right here, we're looking at somewhere close to like a, uh, close to an inch and a half as far as the dimensions, but this bad boy over here, we're looking at like an inch and seven eighth. So we're talking about a lot bigger porch. This is gonna let a lot more airflow through. So this will help us to get the airflow into the cylinder head that we're trying to achieve. So as this piece is bolted together, oh, you can see the difference. That versus this, this looks beautiful. So a few more things we have to get done to this. I have to pick up the pipes, they have welded in, so our runners, which we're gonna have welded in here, which are simulate these runners right here, and then weld our adapter plates in the back, and it will look similar, so it'll be pieced together like this, which will look pretty nice. And we'll have the provision for our extra six injectors, like I said, in the original factory direct injectors. So this bad boy is coming together very, very nice. So this, like I said, this little setup, extremely small. We're looking at this, which was basically like a four inch pipe outer diameter. So we're not even talking about what the inner diameter is. So this thing, as far as volume, may barely be two liters, maybe three. You know, I'll, I'll give it a maybe three but we're talking about a 3.2 liter engine that started off with an intake volume that may barely make 3.2 liters. We'll see, I'll measure it out one day just to know for sure, if I get bored. But anyway, right off the bat, we're running 3.6 liters. So this would have been choking off our horsepower. That bad boy right there, we're already over five liters. If I wanna add more intake volume, all I have to do is get extra adapter plates. Like I said, this is a two liter one. They have one liter spacers that we can put in it and even maybe something a little bit smaller, but it's starting off and looking pretty good. And at the same time, we have our gaskets over here that'll go between each one of this for excellent sealing. So we have that for good sealing between this, as well as, like I said before, our O-rings that's sealing up pretty good. Okay, now, phase three that's in the process of being made up right now, this was the original paperwork from the machinist. Um, sad to say he passed away, but I had a backup plan, so things are still going in effect. So he had on here, uh, as good as it gets, first attempt. Yeah, it was nice. It was definitely very nice. All this was set up properly. This turned out extremely good. So my backup machinist, we're coming up with a better design and this is the design that I wanted for coming down to the final stages. So phase three, as you can see right here, I originally wanted this bevel out a lot more, almost a tighter V between the runners so that the airflow is a lot better. So right off the bat, you can see right here, this is what I want, a nice V right here, airflow come in. So we have a variable intake like velocity stack. So it's flared out a lot larger right here here is knife edge between the ports, so airflow will be nice and awesome. It'll help grab grab the air. Airflow will just funnel in a lot better right there in knife edge right here. So as you can see right here, these are different views of what we're coming up for phase three. 
So I'm kind of looking forward to seeing this and this is going to be pretty nice. So you see this design right there where the air is going to kind of knife edge in between the ports and just suck that bad boy in and flow even better than this phase two setup. 